age and experience can normally always account for youthful enthusiasm, especially at sheepdog competitions. But last weekend in South Australia, the Masters had to share centre stage with a bunch of novices as students took control of the Bamara trials. Far from being put out, the seasoned stock handlers hope the pups stick around so their craft can be passed on to future generations. Many farmers favour horsepower over horses these days. But when it comes to driving sheep across a vast property, sometimes wheels will only get you so far. Come on, fellas. Come on, and that's when Damien Wilson lets his well-drilled team of working dogs take the lead. You risk. Stop there. Stop there. Ned. Where we were farming up in the New England uh, was a trap rock country and anyone that's been in that country will understand there's a lot of bush, there's a lot of rock and without them, I mean, I just, I just couldn't have done it. I mean, you could have had 20 men working the place and they wouldn't have brought the mob in like a couple of dogs can. Push, Ned. The grazier may have recently downsized to a smaller property in the Adelaide Hills, but he wouldn't be without his loyal companions. It's a bond that began when he was a student at a local agricultural school. An old fella was coming to do a bit of a dog demonstration at a fete or a gala day or something like that, and I was a bit keen, so I got to know this old fella. He was 87 and I was 12, and he taught me a bit about, uh, a bit about sheep dogs, and I've sort of gone on from there. And Just the way they work and the way they develop and the way they want to please you from the time they're a little pup and the work they do for you, it's always been a great interest of mine. Out in the paddock today are three-year-olds, Ned and Rob, and their older sister, Whiskey. There is the usual sibling rivalry, but when there's a job to do, these border collies and their boss are all business. Now steady, push them up, come on. Push them up. You're right back. How many commands do you have? Well, you know, I guess English commands are one thing and body language or, you know, the, the tone of your voice. I mean, if you, if you multiply all those dimensions together, I mean, there could be a hundred commands. I've never really stopped it to count them. That'll do. Good dogs. Good girl, Wisp. Here, Robbie. Good boy. Here, Ned. What makes a good handler? Well, patience, although I don't know anyone that's perfect at that. But I think the cooler you can stay with your dogs, the clearer you can make your commands and the more consistent you are with whatever you do. If you know how to move stock yeah. yourself, your dog respects you a little bit more than if you've got no idea. That'll do. What makes a good working dog? Well, I think natural instinct, and they've got to be reasonably well bred in the first place. To test just how well he handles his hard-working hounds, Damien Wilson has become a regular on the sheepdog trials circuit. And our next competitor is competitor 32. Steve Garrity with Somerville Clyde and following him will be competitor 33, Jenny Oliver with Don And one of his favourites is at Barmara in South Australia's Riverland. Barmara is, is so unique uh, and it's so unique because it's run by the school kids themselves and they do such a marvellous job. As far as running the trolls go, it's probably one of the best run trolls you'd ever go to. From the commentary and timekeeping to running the scoreboard and handling the sheep, these pups from Glossop High School teach the old dogs a thing or two and learn even more in return. To begin with, it was just to get off school, but you know, eventually as it goes on, you meet people, you do you start off and you get used to it and when you know the rules and you know what's happening, it does turn out to be really fun. It just um, appealed to me. I like working with animals, and especially dogs. That's just as well, as some of the animals require extra leg work. They learn a lot from the fact that these are not half pet sheep. They also learn a lot of how to work in a team, especially when it's under pressure and things aren't going quite right, and how to work and not to get angry. And probably the biggest thing is a building of self-esteem. You know, once they've run the event, they think, hey, I did that, and that's great. Once kitties feel good about themselves, it brings out all the learning that can go on from there, and they'll try things they would never have thought of before. While the students may run the show, local agriculture teacher Bob Clark has been the driving force behind it for three decades. 
a fair whack, you know, when you think about it, 30 years, you know, you're just taking a fair slab out of your life, really. <laughs> so I thought, no, it hasn't, and this would probably be the swan song, I think. Well, you better my Jasper, stop, stop there. Now, Lou stop Whack there. was a barrier on this side. They'll see him coming. So hopefully you can keep them on the right side. The event is also special for veteran stockman Lou Noble, who came up with the idea to involve Mr Clark and his students. I didn't expect to be here myself 30 years after that. <laughs> but I am and I'm still going, you know. Get out. Like Damien Wilson, Lou Noble started working with sheepdogs when he was a kid. The 85-year-old has now retired from farming, but he's still one of the top dogs out here, recently winning the state championships. Stop there, go out. When I'm out there working sheep and a dog, I don't hear anything else. It goes on outside the ground, I'm concentrating 100%. If you're not, you miss it. You've only got to blink and do something wrong and you've lost it. The terrain may not be as tricky as on the farm, but manoeuvring three stubborn sheep around an obstacle course in less than 15 minutes is no walk in the park. Time's running out, so be quick with those numbers. <laughs> a score of 55 there for Philip Draco. The wind has had a big effect on the sheep. We usually expect scores in the 70s and 80s and we were getting scores a lot lower than that, some people not even scoring. Nonetheless, the people that come to watch, they think, gee, this isn't bad, you know, the people are struggling. Over the years, you know, I've certainly found that um, the dogs that are good on the farm are also good at uh, trolls, particularly when the sheep are a bit rough. Back, back, right back, right back, right back, quick, quick, quick. They can hold right back, right up, right they can block right and cover back, and do the sort of things that perhaps boy, dogs that don't there. get that experience, back, back, um, back. you know, boy, don't back. handle quite as, uh, as well or as naturally. So to me, it just, it's, it's a coming together of the principles and the actual practical side of, uh, of sheep dogs and, and sheep work. These days, though, the arena isn't home to as many full-time farmers. I'm not concerned that the future of sheep dogs is in the hands of hobby farmers at all because, I mean, it does keep it going and it does keep the bloodlines going. And I think these people have got time to focus. They've got, uh, they've got disposable income to spend on it. It's then not lost to the generations of the future. He way behind. Stop, get, get. He's more worried that there'll be no one to hand the dogs to. While these events attract a broad range of appreciative spectators, there aren't a lot of young competitors coming through the ranks. We have tried to encourage trials and things and tried to encourage people out there and it's pretty daunting going out there by yourself. I remember the first time I went out, the throat was a bit dry and I could hardly talk to the dog. My son um, uh, did a bit of bull riding and a bit of bronc riding and I said to him, mate, look, it's dangerous, so, you know, why don't you take up sheepdog trialling? And he said, Dad, he said, to be honest, he said, the young girls just don't look at, um, at uh, sheepdog trialers like they do bull riders. It may not be as flash as some sports, but these students certainly have a new respect for the finesse on show. It's Australian culture, really. It's what everyone gets into. It's what Australians do, so hopefully it does stay around. I'd like to get a dog when I'm older and trial them in this. Oh, he gets a hug from one of his favourite girls. In the meantime, Lou Noble is happy to be the poster boy of sheepdog trialling, with no intention of hanging up his whistle anytime soon. So what else should I do? Play bowls or something? Not on your Nelly. I wouldn't meet the people that I'm meeting now. I'm not, not travelling around. So what else would I do? Sit home and vegetate. And that's not for me. I've worked hard all my life and I'll keep doing that till the day I die, I suppose. As for Damien Wilson, well, every dog has its day. And this year's winner, Damien Wilson, with the Andara Whiskey. 75 of 42, 117, Damien. Back on the farm, a celebratory drink is definitely in order. <laughs> And with the sheep industry no longer in the doldrums, this dog lover says the time is right for other farmers to splash out. I think people sort of probably didn't put the monetary value on dogs that they can today. 
people are starting to look for dogs again because they realise the values back in wool, the values back in sheep. And for me, I mean, it's, it's fantastic to see. It's what this industry's needed for a while. Thank <laughs> you.